building a satellite can be a very complex thing, and there are a lot of things that are done in order to help prevent damage and to make the satellite work for a long period of time and accomplish its mission, whatever it might be. So I can't give a complete explanation of what all there might be done to to do that. It depends on the specific mission. Different customers will have different requirements, and it's pretty common for the commercial world to use some of the government standards that exist, either for the military or for NASA. But I'll talk about some of the general guidelines as to how you can protect your satellite when you're in the process of building it, which is one of the times it's most susceptible to damage. So this is a picture of a, an assembly of a satellite through NASA. You can see a number of different things that are involved in building a satellite here safely. The most obvious thing is the suits that all of the people that are in this room are wearing. These are clean room suits. So this was obviously assembled in some kind of a clean room. You can see a lot of other different things. The There are images that are being taken by this guy back here. So there's some kind of quality images perhaps in order to figure out if there is an issue later on, they can, can trace it back to using some of the photos that they take. You can see that there's a lot of care being done to make sure everything works right. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but there are some kind of anti-static uh, discharge elements that are being done in order to help protect everything there. And generally speaking, this is very, very careful, very deliberate items that are done in order to protect the spacecraft when it is being built because you don't want to damage a satellite. And just like a satellite, uh, just like a computer or other electronics on the ground, you can damage things when you're playing with the inside of them. And really, all satellites are quite sensitive. So the most common type of protection, and this is something that I recommend even for the simplest CubeSat, uh, is electrostatic discharge protection. Now, at its basic level, you'll have a wrist strap that's connected to some kind of a, a bench that is used to protect against it. And what anti-static discharge, basically, if you've ever been shocked be by touching some material at some point in time, or you've ever seen your hair stand straight up because you're rubbing a balloon against it or something like that, you've seen static discharge happen. And sometimes even a small amount that you can't even feel can be enough to damage a satellite or other sensitive equipment. And sometimes it's not always immediately obvious that that equipment has been damaged. So you take these precautionary measures in order to protect this, this satellite that you're building and make sure it's not damaged. And you really don't want to find out after you've launched a satellite that it's been damaged. So on the left, you have a strap that you can wear around your arm and connect it to a, your workbench in order to protect yourself. On the right, you have what's called a smock, what I've heard called a smock. It's a, a jacket you wear on outside of your clothing. Your clothing is the major source of static electricity on your body. And so this can help keep your clothing away from some of the, the electronics and you know, prevent some kind of damage from happening from that. So there are a number of different environments that are um, built, are used to build satellites. They're usually built in some kind of a clean room. It's not absolutely required. And I am definitely familiar with satellites that were not built in clean rooms. But they are it is required to at least have a clean area that you're using to build the satellite. And usually the final assembly will happen in some kind of a clean room when it's being integrated into the rocket because the rocket needs to have the protection for whatever the cleanest satellite that will come through there. Okay, so we have um, a couple of different examples here. On the left is a more commercial type environment. You can see everything that's going on. On the right, this is the Viking lander. And the Viking lander had to be cleaned to an extremely high level because it was going to be used to detect life. So you can see that they're even more careful at the level of protection than they are for a standard spacecraft in order to make sure they weren't contaminating the surface of Mars before they really understood anything about it. 
Clean rooms are usually used for anything with optics. If you have an optical sensor, you want to use a clean room because you don't want to have dust stuck on there. And uh, there are other concerns that can happen, but really the, the idea is to minimize the amount of dust and other contaminants that are in the environment to keep your spacecraft clean before you launch it. And that's why you use a clean room. Uh, for most high-end satellites, they insist on using a clean room. And if you're going to spend $400 million or more dollars, it usually pays to spend an extra half million to a million to use a clean room as opposed to something that was less static. But for more inexpensive satellites, they might not use it unless they're using uh, some kind of optical sensors. And, and for those areas, they will use clean rooms. So they might have a smaller one to do some of those kind of testing. One of the major concerns is FOD. Now, this is not actually a satellite image. This is a aircraft image. But the same kind of thing applies. In this case, the, the person there is removing a couple of pieces of debris that have been stuck inside of an aircraft engine. And had those pieces of debris remained in there, then it could have rattled around inside of the aircraft and could have completely destroyed it. Even just tiny, tiny equipment. There are pictures, you can find them on the internet. I couldn't uh, include them because I couldn't find licenses to them. But there are pictures of electronic boards that have some piece of a screw or a wire soldered in the wrong spot because it was stuck on there. Or you'll have items that will be inside of a propellant tank that you don't want to have junk in there that's not supposed to be because it can cause serious issues if you're at high pressure. So you have to have a very, very clean environment. This is different but related to a clean room. You basically want to make sure that your work areas are clean and that you're not bringing in contaminants any more than, than you absolutely have to. Now, so cleanliness is a very, very important thing for anyone who is working with this kind of sensitive type electronics or aerospace equipment in general. There are examples of, of high-end amounts of equipment that have been damaged from just a very small piece of debris. So, at the very least... Even if you're building a CubeSat at a university and you don't really care how successful it is, you want to build in a clean desk area so you're not going to have any junk get in there. You'll want to inspect your, your work to make sure that nothing's in there. And you'll want to make sure to use electrostatic discharge protection gear. And in the really bad cases, there... Are, this is an example of a satellite that was being tested and it um, fell over because the proper procedures were not followed. So for any kind of potentially hazardous test like this, there are procedures that should be created and will be uh, should be followed in order to prevent this kind of damage. And if your procedure is good, it should prevent this from happening. Basically what happened is one crew came in, set up a test. Another crew came in and borrowed some parts from this test that was set up in order to do something else and didn't return the parts. The first group came back in and they assumed that everything was still the way that they left it the night before and started to do this test. And while well, it wasn't, and the satellite, this multi-hundred million dollar satellite fell over and they had to do some significant work to get it to work right and the company that did this ended up not making any money at all. So the bottom line is is you don't want to do this. You want to take and follow your procedures in place that are designed to help protect you from this kind of damage and you want to create these procedures in a safe environment so that you're not going to have this happen. Luckily with this, nobody was actually hurt. But still, this is $100 million worth of investment that was ruined because somebody wasn't following, a group of people were not following the proper procedure. So anyways, that's all I have for now. There's, Like I said, there, 
you could write a book on how to properly build the satellite, all of the safety standards to help build things. But this is a general kind of guideline of what you need to do to make everything work. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. And until next time, keep on tracking. We will see you then.